and welcome back to another Mythology Monday. I'm your host Alice Hanoff and if you've been following my videos for a while now you'll know we're working our way through the ten sorcerer lines in the world of Torian which if you don't know is the fantasy world from my upcoming debut novel The Head, the Heart and the Air. Now this week we're going to be talking about the sorcerer line of Hades. As you can probably guess since the last two weeks were Greek mythology based the line of Hades is also from Greek mythology and its founder is Hades, the god of the underworld, or Pluto as he's known in the Roman type names and that. Now the color for the Hades line is grey and their line mark is this lovely eerie tombstone, which makes perfect sense when you are the line of the dead. <laughs> now the powers that the Hades sorceress possess are again dealing all with the dead. They can talk to and see and communicate with the dead. It's important to differentiate that because for a normal sorcerer to talk to the dead they can do so if they perform a spell or have a potion made but a Hades sorcerer always can talk to the dead. So they often wander around looking a little bit like they're drunk or talking to themselves because they're often being hounded by ghosts who are trying to communicate something to the living through them. The other thing they do is they are able to see how people die which is one of the reasons that the Hades line tends to be more solitary because when they care about people a lot they end up being able to see how they meet their end which is probably not something you would like to know about the people you care about. So especially when there is no way to affect or change what's going to happen they simply know and that wouldn't be something you really want to share with everybody. So Hades made his way to the world of Tori exactly the same way that Ares and Cassandra did. They were on the boat with Poseidon. They fled during the Trojan War when Cassandra was like, hey guys, this is gonna go bad. And because they gods all knew that she'd been cursed for no one to believe her, they followed her and they listened and they ended up finding their way to Torian. And while Hades was not super impressive in regards to the power that the other three people he arrived with possessed, because they took in Poseidon and Ares and Cassandra, Hades came along. Now in the territories of Torian and the Forbidden Lands where the sorcerers live, the Hades line tends to keep to themselves a little bit. They do get along with almost all of the lines. They are considered a bit of a joke with regards to the powers. They're laughed at. They're seen as the weakest and the lowest of the ten lines, so nobody really takes them all that seriously. They do still serve a purpose, especially for the head and the other titans in being able to know when people are going to pass away or if messages need to be conveyed by other previous heads and things like that. They do come in very handy but for the average sorcerer they don't really find Hades to be all that impressive. So yeah I hope you learned a lot about the land of Hades. If you're not already subscribed make sure you do so that you get notified next week when we start talking about the line of Poseidon.